started as a, oh, I'm just gonna leap through this and see where all the plot points land to study a fantasy mystery, and it ended up with me just rereading it. A week since I last picked it up. <laughs> uh, whoops. Here we are. <laughs> and yet again. <laughs> We did it. And yeah, it's just about three in the morning. Love that for me. Hello everyone, my name is Jenna, but you guys can call me Jenna. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new, hi, hello. Welcome to the start of another weekend vlog. It is Friday, technically Saturday, because it's 3 a.m. Oh, it's weird talking with my earphones on. I can't hear anything right now. I'm gonna turn these off and we'll just keep talking. Um, I have been sitting here since 7.30, roughly dinner when I got home from piano. Maybe it was eight, I don't know, but I just continued to reread this because I decided yesterday, I can't believe I did this. I have literally never done this in my life, but I decided yesterday because I have been, I have been planning Sage's Trilogy for the past week. <laughs> As you guys know, I have been planning Sage's story since last week and I swear this is just unlocking something in me and I haven't been able to stop listening to the writing about dragons and shit podcast. I am stuck in it and I love it so much. So much so that like I can't listen to it at work because like when I'm doing regular work because it just clicks something in my brain now and all I want to do is focus on Sage's story. But I got to a point yesterday I was doing a lot of the like save the cat stuff. I'm gonna do a specific vlog for this because it's like a series vlog specifically learning how to write a trilogy situation and planning this trilogy and i got part way through because i decided to do a little bit more of a dedicated like save the cat beat style outline for the first book i got to a certain point i got into act two i broke into act two and then i was like wait 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 i don't know enough about writing a mystery because this is going to be a fantasy mystery book. The first book in this trilogy is a fantasy mystery book. And so I was like, great, let me go study that a little bit. And I like looked up online and wrote notes and stuff, watched a couple videos of people talking about specifically how to write like cozy mysteries, which is a very interesting topic. And like looking at the beats of how this one author did it, an author by the name of A.N. Sage. And then I was like, what if I go take a couple of fantasy mysteries off my shelves and leaf through them and see how they do things? <laughs> so I took Empire of Exiles because I had just recently read it off the shelves. And I also took The Helm of Midnight and also S. Usher Evans's uh, Drinks and Sinkholes. Three very different fantasy mysteries because this one is like epic adventure fantasy. Drinks and Sinkholes is cozy fantasy, cozy mystery fantasy. And then Helm of Midnight is like horror fantasy mixed in. And then I flipped through mainly to the direct midpoint of each of the books just to see what they were. So I literally put in like 378 divided by two and it was like page 189 roughly should be the midpoint which is chapter 10 and so I was like okay great and I was reading it and I kind of like read a little bit in front read a bit a little bit in the back and then I decided I'm like okay so this on one on page 190 is the midpoint turn it's another reveal of information and I was like but that doesn't feel like grand enough so I had to read backwards and read forwards and I'm like no no that is definitely the midpoint because there's so many different things in each of the individual characters arcs that are all hitting a mid point and I'm just like oh, okay there we go there's what it is and then I was like what if I just start from the beginning and start leaping through this to start like studying to see how Aaron M. Evans like have, has set up this fantasy mystery and that just turned into me rereading the book <laughs> while still studying it I don't know if you can tell from all of the all of the tabbies that are kind of tucked into the book but definitely studying this bad boy but I reread it without the audiobook because I was rereading it, listening to the podcast of writing about dragons and shit, which was so fun and so bananas. I cannot believe that my brain allowed me to do that. Reread this, study this, and listen to a podcast the entire time. I don't know what's wrong with my brain. <laughs> so I was in it and I'm just, oh God, this book is so good. <laughs> of seeing how Aaron M. Evans was doing it and like rereading it so soon after I last finished it. I finished it literally last Saturday, less than a week ago, six days ago. I was rereading it and coming across like just literally the things that Aaron M. Evans was doing on the first page 
to set things up i'm like wow it's so obvious now because i know what's going on but like knowing and seeing it done and then seeing what she's doing to set up things i have learned so much through this reread so yeah that's what i did for the past couple days and i just finished this the reread again so i read this last saturday then read the housemaid and then read this again i've never done that before oh my god anyways <laughs> so this weekend i'm going to be working on sage's trilogy for sure because it is just like gnawing a hole in my brain and now that i have this finished i'm gonna see if i can really plot out the first book properly act two and act three for sage's story using this as kind of like a guide just to like make sure i'm kind of hitting the right things and knowing the right things because no like having this as a guide to see like what kind of twists and information and clues are laid out like when they're laid out is a really smart idea to do because like re rereading this is just noticing how well balanced every single scene of this book is every single scene does something it, it just <laughs> which is what's supposed to happen but just seeing it in action and being able to notice that oh my god this is a fabulous book this poor book is going to be reread so many times i can tell i love it i love it so much but other than that what have i got going on this weekend tomorrow i have a friend is doing a whole sri lankan food evening for all of us which should be fun it's in celebration of something that my brain just does not want to remember which is so terrible but it's in celebration of something and I'm excited because she's excited and all of us are like, yeah, we want to know what your food is like. Please make us your food. So we're all going to get fed tomorrow. Really not a, whole lot, not a whole lot going on. I think Sunday I'm meeting Sophia and Caitlin at my parents' house because they're picking up some bookshelves that my parents are getting rid of. Um, but I don't think my parents are going to be there. They're going to be at the cabin. It's this whole thing. <laughs> so that's where I'm going to be on Sunday just for a little bit just to meet them there because then I will handle the opening of the garage and being like hi this is my parents house welcome but other than that what am i gonna be reading this weekend i have a hankering to start this the blighted stars by megan o'keefe good old good old quality sci-fi but other than that i don't know what i'm gonna be reading i still have half of the james islington book to go so i should probably do that i have so many other things that i need to read <laughs> that i have on my tbr that i have like on libby as audiobooks on on script as audiobooks all that kind of stuff and all my brain wants to do is work on sage's trilogy and oh, i'm just so excited like coming up with things and brainstorming things is one of my favorite places to be in the creative process and this has just been genuinely so enjoyable but yeah i did transform this cover when did i do this i don't i think it was this in the middle of the week this was like a trash journal that i had not really a trash journal but like a really itty bitty journal that i was writing all of sage's stuff in planning stuff wise and i've decided that this is going to be kept for like the scratch note planning and the learning about like taking notes about how to write a series and stuff like that because then i went to staples <laughs> and i picked up this beautiful baby because it is gorgeous stunning we love new stationery so these two are sages notebooks for sages story specifically and i'm using this one to really i used the first page for some villain work which is gonna be fun i think it's just like both of them are just gonna be used for whatever they're gonna be used for um but like maybe i'll get some writing done in here maybe i'll get some more planning done more character work done that kind of a thing but because this is going to be finished very soon it is so small anyway yeah so that's the plan for the weekend i'm gonna be working on sages story the brain just wants to do all the braining I'm going to be well i'm not going to be reading this anymore because i've already reread it <laughs> but it's going to be staying by my side i'm probably going to be reading the sci-fi just to see how things go and uh, yeah it's gonna be a good weekend in general i think i am very tired i'm gonna go to bed but yeah welcome to the start of a vlog started with rereading a book that i read literally last weekend and it is so fabulous and i cannot wait to just reread it forever <laughs> And I've pre-ordered the second one already, like, because I want it to be waiting for me at the bookstore on April 30th. Fingers crossed that it is. My indie bookstore is really good about that so far. All my, all my pre-orders this year have been really, really good about that, being at the store on release day. So, incredible. Because usually when I was pre-ordering through Indigo and it was being sent to me, I wasn't getting it for, like, a week or more after the release day. It defeats the purpose of pre-ordering a book when you want it to be in your hands on release day, you know? <sighs> Welcome to the vlog. It's gonna be a good one. Um, Talk to you tomorrow for Saturday.
Hello, beautiful people. Happy Sunday. I am here doing some work on Sage Astrology, which has been very fun. I have been doing just some endless writing, planning, thinking about uh, my villain and her backstory and her motives. And I'm not gonna lie, a little bit of me is like, what if I wrote this story instead? But no. <laughs> but no, I have... I have just, I have a good brain, and when that happens sometimes, it's just because a good brain is coming up with many ideas about this person's story. So that's what I've been doing. Um, I also went through an Empire of Exiles and kind of did like little random sticky notes of like various things that I need to think about for my story, like structure stuff and clue stuff and things that I just need to do to properly plot the story. Anyways, so that's what I've been doing today. Earlier I went and met friends at my parents' house because they were getting, they were taking two bookshelves that mom and dad had in the basement and they were picking them up. I don't believe I talked to you yesterday at all. I started reading uh, The Blighted Stars by Megan O'Keefe. Yesterday I'm about 106 pages in. I'm enjoying it. It's giving... It's, what is it reminding me of? It's giving like the one Tchaikovsky book that I read, the Adrian Tchaikovsky Children of Time. Is that what the one that I read? I don't remember. It's giving that one. I have it in my bedroom. I'll just go find it. <laughs> it's giving that book. It's also giving a little bit of the, uh, the last, the, uh, the last watch by homegirl JS Dews, which is very fun. Uh, what was the book called? Children of Time, I was correct. It's giving this one by Adrian Tchaikovsky, but like better. <laughs> We're kind of introduced to this interesting world where people can be reprinted, which is giving like, let's 3D print some people. <laughs> it can be reprinted because their neural pathways are saved. So they can be, oh yeah, my popcorn's over here. They can be reprinted into new bodies when they die if their neural pathways haven't cracked or gone wrong because that's a danger like if your death is really traumatic or like something goes wrong with your sanity like sometimes you'll be fully dead unable to come back kind of a thing it's this really interesting concept and at the beginning of this we're following the son of this like big mogul who like their family does mining on different kinds of systems and of like star systems and whatever and their way of mining is supposed to be like good and there's this like idea <laughs> that oh gosh how am i explaining this there's this idea that that the sun has because it's like he's done a lot of research on this he's like a, a natural geologist type of person a, a scientist of that kind of ilk. He's done a lot of research on like fungi and stuff that the way that they mine things is that they send this fungus into these places and it like is fine according to them and like leaves the place as verdant as it was before and they get all these natural resources from it, etc, etc. But so the, the son is on a quest at the beginning of this. They're on a, like a mission, his own mission with his father there to essentially prove that what they're doing isn't destroying the worlds because this has been a claim by somebody. And like this whole group of people called the conservators because the conservators are saying like, whatever the fuck you guys are doing is destroying all these planets and these star systems, right? And so at the beginning of this, we have this kid, essentially, he's like in his 30s, he's not a kid, but he feels like a kid, young guy, very naive, believes that his father's system doesn't actually do any harm. He believes this wholeheartedly, and he's like setting out to prove this to people, like get the evidence, the hard evidence that it's not going to do anything. And on the way there, they are attacked by something. They, and the ship that they're on basically is fucking destroyed. It kills his father, not permanently, but like in a way where it lets this kid, I don't remember his name, Thorin maybe? My brain is not, I don't have the memory. You guys know this, but <laughs> I don't have memory. <laughs> we'll call him Thorin. So Thorin, he and up like his father says like go home like i'm ordering you to go home before his father dies and yet his the son thorin is like but what if i don't what if i actually save all these people that you're about to condemn to death because of this attack and what if i continue with my mission and so he betrays his father's order 
and is in the middle like he's like someone's in the middle of being reprinted at this moment and it's he believes it to be his father's ex ex lockhart <laughs> and when this person is reprinted they are not ex lockhart but he doesn't know that. The person who's reprinted into them, like the, the mind that's reprinted into E.X. Lockhart's body is the one of the conservators who Thorin went up against on the stand. Like Thorin went up and like swore up and down against her. Like he went up against her and he thinks that his act essentially got her perma-killed. It did not. She's still alive. And she is there. <laughs> to take him down, essentially. But in this moment of this attack and whatever, she has to pretend that she is EX Lockhart to like figure out what the fuck's happening because they all like escape, like 50 of these people from the ship escape into another ship. And then that little like pod like crash lands into the system that where they were heading originally. And what they're expecting is like green verdant life. They open it up and this world has already been infected by this spore thing that was taking over, was like what, the conservators were blaming this family for leaving on the on these islands and basically like killing all these worlds so it's like a dying star system it's a di dying planet so that's where they crash land <laughs> they have no way of getting out something else is happening because they're trying to get in contact with the other ship that they're tied to like the twin ship to theirs and all that thorin is getting in response is screams and static and he does not know what the fuck is happening <laughs> and it's like the ai of the ship has gone weird because the ai keeps trying to contact him but whenever he answers it's just the static scream it's a little creepy there's horror elements brought in but i'm literally only 100 pages in so i'm very interested in what's going on with this and what's going to happen with this because there's also apparently supposed to be a romance in here that's very intriguing and like horror elements and stuff like that so i'm very intrigued by it <laughs> i should have been reading it today but i guess i just i'm not in a reading mood right now I'm in the mood to work on Sage's story and to really like dig into the bits and pieces of, the, of my villain, which is what I've been doing. And it's been very helpful because now I have these new like world building beats from the story that I've been telling about my villain to flesh out into like the world building and the situation that's going to tie into the story. I'm very excited. Anyways, I came over here to make popcorn, which is what I'm going to do now. <laughs> but yeah, I think also... I'm going to do some audiobooking a little later. I have the whole evening to myself and I'm also going to decide whether or not I want to go to the grocery store. <laughs> I don't really need anything like desperate for this week, but I could, like I don't have any like snacks in my house. I have got I've, I've run out of snacks. I've run out of <laughs> like things that I can easily eat. I should probably get some more bagels, like that kind of a thing, but god, I don't want to go. I don't wanna, I don't want to leave my house again. <laughs> Today I also went to the uh, library on the way to my friend Yelani's before- oh, also, we were celebrating Sri Lankan New Year. <laughs> That's what we were celebrating. My brain, the way I could not remember that. <laughs> but we were celebrating Sri Lankan New Year and it was amazing. It was so fun. Yelani did so much work. Homegirl was cooking forever and it just, it smelled amazing. Like you walk up to her apartment, you could smell it outside her apartment. It smelled so good. She had a whole spread. There was 12 of us there. It was amazing. It was so good. But yeah, before then, I went and picked up All My Rage by Sabat Tahir and The Just Said Air, two holds that were in from the library. So I have even more library books to read now. <laughs> Anyways, that's what's new. That's what's up. I'm gonna continue kind of crafting. I just got the hankering for some popcorn for a little snack here. And uh, we'll see how the evening goes because it's 4.15. So we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. But yeah, what a day. What a time. <laughs> a few moments later. I really want cake. So we're going to go get groceries. <laughs> Let's go get some cake. <laughs> Hopefully the bakery has some. We got the cake. I just checked Twitter. Aaron M. Evans noticed my video. I didn't tag her at all because it, it's bad form to tag authors in anything to do with their books. Not necessarily. If it's like a gushing, really super happy thing, I want to be tagged. But if it's a critique of any kind, no thank you. Do not, do not, do not. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much, my mental health doesn't want that. It's not very nice to do, you know, to be flat out mean to an author, but 
I just had just the title of the book, Empire of Exiles, in, in my last vlog, right? In like the title of the vlog. I think originally the, the, the title was The Housemaid, Empire of Exiles, and Starting a New Trilogy, but I've switched it around to Starting a New Tril Trilogy, The Housemaid, and whatever. She liked it and reposted my tweet about the video. That means she noticed me. That means the people that she deals with are gonna notice me. Holy shit. <laughs> It's so cool when authors do that, <laughs> like they, especially authors that are connected to people like B. Dave. Because B. Dave is fucking, that man does so much shit, man. <laughs> Erin M. Evans wrote for Wizards of the Coast. She wrote like a seven book series. Six books, my apologies. <laughs> Homegirl does stuff. She's like part of the actual play community. And she noticed me my video she liked it and reposted it what a weird time to be alive anyways hello friends i am here i'm moving into my bedroom because i'm one tired but not tired enough where i want to like actually go to bed it is so weird talking with both headphones on oh <laughs> i want to get cozy in bed because i am a little sleepy so like i know when i'm like fully like okay i need to sign out <laughs> sign out of life for the night <laughs> but uh man this vlog has been decidedly not a reading vlog at all. I read 106 pages of The Blighted Stars by Megan O'Keefe and nothing else. All I've been doing is working on my own projects, which is crazy because I just did a thing tonight that we'll probably talk to you guys about in a number of weeks. Just, I need to get it settled and ready and, and, and going, but like, insane. And then I've been working on Sage's trilogy as well plotting things and thinking about things and the last time i talked to you guys i was working on the villain stuff and like plotting out her backstory thinking things through with with that and then there's a number of like world building elements that i need to now expand on that i thought up of through her backstory and then after that i decided to with all those like crazy sticky notes that i have now organized <laughs> that I had done pulling like the elements out of Empire of Exiles after studying it again today. I didn't reread it. I just like flipped through really quickly to grab the elements that I needed and wrote them on sticky notes. I started thinking up clues that my people could find, reveals that are tied to that and like what these clues kind of mean or like what they are and that kind of a thing. And then I decided just like, just brain dump it, right? Like I had, I can't even tell you because it's all spoilery. <laughs> I was about to start listing them. It is spoilery, I cannot tell you. But having these clues just dumped in out of my brain onto the page in any order. And then I started numbering them and as like, this is the first clue they find. This is the second clue. This is the third clue A, B, and C that they find. So like it's a multi-layered clue. And then this is clue number four layered clue. So like doing that kind of stuff, <laughs> which was really fun because as I was going through Empire of Exiles, I was also taking note in this section here of like how many theories there were, how I didn't take any stock of the interviews. I forgot about the interviews until halfway through and I was like, well, I'm not restarting. And then how many like clues and reveals there were. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna try and emulate that. Like, is like, I know her book is multi POV and I don't think Sage's story is gonna be multi POV. I'm gonna have to start writing it to really be able to tell, but I think it's just gonna be her POV, I think. <laughs> Because I naturally write multi POV as well. So we're going to see. We're going to see how Sage's works if it needs the support of an extra POV in there. But because Aaron's is multi POV, there's like a full solid like 15 clues dropped. 15 clues and reveals dropped. Like moments where things are like discovered or whatever. And I'm sure I missed some like smaller ones, but like that's like the majority of like the bigger ones and the noticeable ones. So I was trying to like emulate that and have like enough things. And I think I have enough things for the first 60% of the book. So now I need to start thinking about specifically clues towards the second part and the second section after a reveal tells them something really big at the midpoint, right? So I know what the midpoint's gonna be, which is fantastic, that's very important. And then I know little things of like, I know now I know like the clues that are need to be laid out and kind of when they need to be laid out as well, which is kind of nice. And then this is another one at the back here that I'm like, it's gonna be something and it's gonna be something that they're gonna think about, but it's not gonna be like revealed as to why it's important until later and they're not gonna really notice, but it's gonna be like laying the, the trail, you know? <laughs> All I can say is that having read through Empire of Exiles twice <laughs> in a week, I fan fucking tastic book. Like this is gonna be like my favorite book of the year. <laughs> like I can't. Like I want to reread it 
again. And I reread it twice in six days. I don't know what it is about, but having that and having gone through and like started working on like plot stuff with, with this and actually like studying. Also, I, I mentioned this because I'm doing a video, of course, as I mentioned, for like building a series and, and plotting this out. In that video, I also talk about how the fact that I looked up like plotting a mystery specifically because I wanted to see if anyone had written down like a beat sheet specifically for mysteries because I'm not very well versed in writing mysteries and I want to get it right. I want to get it balanced right. So I want to like know kind of like if there's any, you know, very popular beats that have to be hap that have to happen in a mystery, etc. And there wasn't really anything specifically on mystery, but there was on cozy mystery. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to take that and then I'm going to watch this video and then after watching the video and actually it was two videos about that author actually I might have mentioned it earlier in this video doesn't matter watch a video about that like from that author and then I reread Empire of Exiles and I noticed the beats coming that that author was mentioning some of the beats were reflected in Empire of Exiles so having like what read that or watched that video and and learned about all these beats of a, of a of a cozy mystery for example what that author does to structure her book and then seeing it in a fantasy mystery, seeing something very, very similar reflected was a very, very intelligent way of looking at things and, and learning about the structure of a mystery book specifically. And I'm very happy I did because it's going to help me so much when I'm writing this book and even when I'm crafting this book, because this is not only going to help me with like the clue part and like learning how to like properly sprinkle it through a book, but it, the end sequence of Erin M. Evans' book was so interesting because it was so perfectly paced in my head. It, but this book is fan fucking fantastic, as you guys know. The ending was paced so well. And as I was rereading it, I was noting like all of the different moments of turns and events and things that were happening. The way that I was going through it, I was like, every single one of these things is a choice by a character. What an interesting way to do it. Like it's every single moment of a turn in this ending, every beat, every thing was a choice by the choice by someone, either the POV character or a character that was like very close to the POV character. Everything was a choice, an active choice, which was setting off these events that they couldn't control, right? It was a choice, but it did something bad or good or whatever they did, right? Everything was a choice. And I think that was very helpful for me because I've noticed a tendency in my writing, even like reflecting on past writing, a lot of things happen to characters and I need the characters to do stuff. I need them to choose. I need them to set off events. And I think that's going to really help sculpt Sage's story, at least the first book. I have been having a great day of brainwave stuff. <laughs> And I went and got cake at the at the store about an hour before they closed. So it was like me and one other guy in the store. It was fantastic. Highly recommend going to the grocery store at 9 p.m. <laughs> Especially when you reward yourself with some cake. And now I have a little bit of cake left over for tomorrow as well. It has been such a fabulous day. I feel so inspired. I feel so ready. What a weird place to be. Again, like last weekend, I'm so mentally exhausted and I need a break, but I'm still so inspired and I don't want to break from my creative stuff. I think what I need a break from is my like real life stuff. <laughs> Not that my creative stuff isn't real life stuff, but you know what I mean? The full-time job, the teaching, all that kind of stuff. I need a break from that. <laughs> I don't need a break from the creation because this is all I want to do. All I want to do is work on my creative projects. What a day. <laughs> Anyways, it is past midnight it's almost 12 it's just past 12 30 and i want to work a little more on this see if my brain cooks up anything else as i think things through which is gonna be fun i don't know whether i'm going to still work on the clues and the reveals and the theories because i've also started talking about like theories that the characters might have and like what's going on because what i've learned is that a lot of the theories that the characters have are then either proven or disproven with a clue that then leads to something else like it's a very like movement forward type of situation so the theories are very important to figure out what my characters think is happening. Before I then go back and dive back into the act structure and plot this out. <laughs> oh goodness, my phone is gonna die. But yeah, I apologize for this becoming more of a writing, just regular weekend vlog rather than a reading vlog. I read 100 pages of a sci-fi book that I will be continuing, but I plan to read more this weekend. My brain is just on creative mode, which is totally fine. I just, I realized today as I was sitting there, I was like, I didn't read a damn thing today and I don't want to read, which is very weird. I just want to work on this. Sage's story is in progress. I feel like once I have this outline nailed down, 
for book one, it's going to be really hard not to just jump right into writing it, even though I want to also outline most of book two, at least a skeleton of it. And also, I want to work on Mary and Zanvi's story, but my brain is so into this right now that it could not care less about Mary's and Zanvi's story, which I guess is good because then when I go back to that story, my brain is going to be so fresh and so not attached to it that it's going to be a great time. It's very good because it's a lot of brand new world building, story building, crafting and stuff like that because it's a new part of Rivar that I haven't been to. Um, we're dealing with new characters. It's going to be great. I'm so excited. Anyways, I'm going to leave in here for the day. I'll chat to you tomorrow for Monday, but yeah, it's a protective day. <laughs>